Great to see you here and uh, wanted to uh, uh, go over some opportunities and, and uh, get a time to greet one another and, and give prayer requests before the service starts in earnest. Uh, so let me just share some of the, the opportunities that, uh, that are coming. Um, one, Disciple Life. Uh, uh, we didn't have it last week, and, and I'll just let you know, next week, uh, that starts like a series of certain days that we're not able to have it, so uh, this might be, I know for the ladies it's the last one, but uh, guys, we'll talk about that tonight, of what we're going to be doing. So, uh, but that's at uh, 5 o'clock, uh, guys over at, the, at my house, and, and uh, ladies over here at the Fellowship Hall. Um, next. next week... Next week, yes. Next week we have the Memorial Day cookout. I'm just trying to think of what day is it. Um, and uh, it's not Memorial Day, it's the day before, but we always have a time to celebrate uh, together and uh, remembering those uh, who gave their all. Uh, so again, that is this coming Sunday. So come hungry and come bring a friend. Uh, in addition to eating, even afterwards, we're thinking about doing some lawn, lawn games and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so uh, again, just, just having a fun time together. So again, uh, we'll talk more about that um, uh, in, in a little bit. So um, then... Uh, uh, Break a, rock, break a Rock Beach. That's a hard thing to say, but that is the, the theme of our VBS. Uh, we have our last workers meeting, um, and we're going to do that right after the service. Um, June 2nd, so, so then the rest of the, the, rest of the day uh, that you have off. Um, so, so again, uh, that's our VBS workers meeting, and uh, uh, so just plan ahead on that. Uh, then... That same day, everything is on, sept, is, is on June 2nd, uh, and um, the graduate uh, recognition, the announcement on that is I need to make, sh make sure if I don't have them, I can't put them on the sheet. So if you know of any graduate, right now I have seven that are on the sheet, um, and there's a couple details I need from a few of them, but, but again, um, um, we'll have a great celebration celebrating them uh, on the 2nd. Also on the 2nd, uh, is when our, we have our annual conference, and a big part of that is the budget. So take a copy of the budget. It's in the fellowship. It's in the foyer. Um, and make sure you get that and look at that. If you have any questions, just ask Wanda. She knows it all. Now, or any of the other uh, finance committee, and uh, we're glad to, to see if there's any questions regarding regarding that. So certain things that are going to be happening in, in, these, in these days. Um, and um, before we have a time of, of greeting, one another. Um, I want you to uh, say, make sure you find Charles. Charles, would you raise your hand? Would you go to Charles and say happy birthday to him? He wants to make sure. He is so quiet about, you're pointing at somebody else. May the 19th. May the 19th. Is it Ryan? Ryan, uh, make sure you say hi to Ryan and all that as well. And so uh, great celebrations. Here's another celebration. Uh, yesterday, Henry and Linda was, were married the 20, were married 56, I'll, I'll be okay by the time I preach, uh, 56 years of marriage, and so congratulations there. And when you throw out 56 and all that, 29 years tomorrow, um, just seems so short, but that is for, for Candy and I, as well as, there's also two couples that were married the same date on the 20th, seven years ago. Yeah. Oh, you okay? You guys better say yes. I'm looking at the, the, both, both couples here, and so congratulations um, uh, to to y'all as well. Lots of congratulations, uh, celebrations, uh, and you'll note in your bulletin, um, Sarah um, Hartzog is going to be celebrating her 50th, and she publicized it. I didn't do that um, that day. Uh, so uh, again, uh, make sure you take a look at that. All right. Did I miss any others? Oh yeah, finance committee. We were not able to meet last week, but uh, you're going to be meeting. Um, you're going to be meeting tomorrow night as well. So, all righty, um, all right. Let's take time and greet one another.
Do I have to break this up again? All righty, make your way back. <laughs> All righty, as we make our way back to our seats. I wanted to go over some prayer requests before uh, uh, we begin our service in prayer. Um, uh, so let me let me put uh, put that on the screen. Uh, there's there's several on the list. Some have been on there for a while, but I, I did want to just um, mention a, a couple that have been added to that. Um, uh, Karen uh, normally sits back there, uh, not here today, but uh, a good friend of hers, Paula, uh, is in the hospital now uh, with, with cancer and pneumonia. So please pray for her. Um, my son, um, he heads out this week for Mission Serve for this whole summer. Um, and also look down on that list. I'm looking at the list in the back. It's, it's over here for y'all. But um, Laura uh, Pearson is, is, I don't know what time her flight was, but she is flying off to, to uh, South Dakota uh, to do a week of missions there uh, through um, um, you know, various tribal missions that are happening there. So please pray for her, for uh, not just the traveling, but also just that God will work in her and through her. Uh, to share Christ with others. So, again, just mentioning a couple of those. Um, and then um, uh, you'll see a name up there, Gordon. Uh, you may not be familiar, but uh, that is uh, Doug's uh, uh, former pastor uh, and under hospice uh, care, and they're not giving him much time um, before he goes to heaven. So that's the, the good side of that story. But please pray for him and his family. Um, Mark went back to the hospital um, and uh, uh, yesterday and even the day before. Uh, so keep praying for him as, uh, they're, again, they're just trying to adjust some things for him and uh, um, just uh, be, be in he prayer for him. He is home. Yes, he is home. He is home. So um, also um, just... Uh, uh, Barry goes this Thursday for a reversal, and so we will be remembering you, Barry. Um, and it's been great seeing you. We know how to make you miss a couple more weeks, but uh, good to see you here, um, as always. So we'll be praying for you this Thursday. All righty. Um, other prayer needs, or even other praises this morning. All righty. Well, let's have a time of prayer. And again, I. Okay, you have a praise. Yeah, you weren't here last week. They were here last week. But it's, we're still praising God that, that Barbara and Eddie are back. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it lets you know you were noticing. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they were here. They got here last week. So, um, um, and uh, all right. Well, let's, let's go to our Savior in prayer again. Whether you pray there or I'll, I'll invite you to come up front to pray if you'd like to do that as well. Let's go to our Savior in prayer. situation uh, of how to have the right balance with with uh, with this congestive heart failure um, just helping him there uh, father for for all all of these uh, just giving wisdom and, and again that you would use whatever the ailment is um, 
Father, I pray, I pray, like even with Paula's situation, um, that uh, again, you would receive glory and people would be drawn to you. Uh, Father, again, we pray for these who are on mission uh, in, in a specific way of leaving. We pray for Laura even today as she travels uh, and they get started tomorrow in, in going into uh, these tribal missions. And, and Father, just use her. Uh, to share you, even even using some of the, the talents and giftedness of, of being a veterinarian to open the doors for the conversations. Uh, and so, God, I pray uh, for, for Josh as he is getting ready for mission serve. I pray for him and that you would use him this summer uh, to to equip the those running these various places of missions and youth that are coming as we're going to be doing too. Uh, Father, I pray that you would help him in this. And Jesus, uh, we come. And we come for times of rejoicing to you. Uh, the privilege of, of being married uh, for whether it be seven years tomorrow for a couple in, two couples in here or 29 years or 56 years. God, we thank you for that great privilege and your enablement. Father, for birthdays. Uh, to celebrate. Uh, we thank you for that. And, and God, uh, we come not to celebrate birthdays and all that, though, though it's all a part of your good giftedness. We come to celebrate you. Jesus, we come to, to remember what you did for us. And then also to get our marching orders of how you want us to grow in you how you want us uh, to, to make a difference in this community, not in just nice things, but specifically sharing you because you are the difference. <laughs> you are the difference between heaven and hell. You are the difference. And so I pray. I pray even as, as, as uh, I present to the church today and begin sharing about the direction of our church, that, God, you would arise, your people would arise and get their marching orders from you. That together we will see what you can do through us. Now be glorified. In every song we're about to sing, be glorified as we listen to your word preached. Be glorified as we part so that we can be witnesses of you. We pray in your name. Amen. All right, let's stand as we sing our song for the month. You are my king.
Hallelujah. If I could just them to cut off when I do at the end, because my lungs ain't as big as theirs are right there. But you know what? Jesus, you are our king. And the thing of it is, he's our king whether we acknowledge it or not. Because one day, every knee, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. All right, now let's sing <coughs> How Firm a Foundation. <laughs> If you don't remember any words of that song, remember that last line. I'll never, no never forsake. Hallelujah. You can be seated.
I'm looking to see, because I'm seeing some of the youth age, and I know there's a ton in the nursery, but I'm seeing if there's any in the grade school age. Wave your hand for children's worship. I'm just... Just seeing. All righty. All right. Again, yeah, be glad if you are on the nursery list, you're not there because there's like, you know, five, six, seven, eight children in there. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it's great to see uh, some youth here today uh, as well. I just wanted to make sure before I, I started. Um, um, a few months back, and, and actually I could even say a few years ago, um, there was a process beginning of, 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 of God, you know, what are we, what are we about? And, and, you know, you, you hear about mission, vision statements and stuff like that. And you know what, if, if a mission statement isn't pretty much like what other churches should be, then, then something's wrong, especially if it doesn't line up with God's word. Um, but it was a few months ago that in an elders meeting that it just came of, you know, looking at different things. We're like, you know, we need to have something that is the, the filter, the, the what, do we, what do we say? Does this fit? Does this fit of who God has made Kings Creek Baptist Church uh, to be? Um, and that began a process that, again, kind of picked up a process that was pre-COVID um, and just kind of got set aside. Um, and and I, uh, the elders and some of the candidates for eldership, uh, we talked a lot about it. We even had a, a meeting a couple weeks ago with so, uh, some of the leaders of our church outside of the eldership um, to just, you know, see where where is God leading us? And so that's what this message uh, is about. What is our purpose? Um, wh what, are, what are we about as Kings Creek Baptist Church? Uh, you're going to hear these phrases over and over and over again of uh, growing upward, growing together together and growing outward. Um, and, and what it is, is that's an easy thing to remember. That's one of those things that, you know, you, you, know, you, you talk to people like, oh, you got to remember it and stuff like that. Um, but, but this is something that, that over the next three weeks, I'm going to be sharing what does that look like? And, and more importantly, you know, what does God's word say about that? This isn't something that we're making up. Um, and, and so I'm going to do a little exercise because this is something to help you remember. Okay, so um, um, I'm going to make you stand. I'm going to make you stand. Don't worry, you know, uh, just, just stand, just stand, just stand, just stand, stand. All righty. So, so there's even, to help you remember, there's even motions, and those arrows are going to help you there, you know. And so what we're going to be learning of our purpose is we are growing upward, we are growing together, and we are growing outward. That's really easy to remember and all this other stuff. So, so let's do that again. We are growing upward, growing together, growing outward. And, and you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. So have a seat. Have a seat. You're gonna, I'm going to be doing that. I, I'm going to try to do those motions and stuff like that. And, and uh, we even struggle with the word together. Inward would have been so much more rhythmically added to it. But, but together communicates that a little bit better. So, so we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but but um, I, I want to kind of walk you through the same process. If you were in that leaders meeting, um, it's going to be things that you heard that, that meeting as well. Um, but then there were some things that came out of that meeting that, that in this message I can say, and because of this, here's some things we're doing. Now, here's the thing. This is not something to be that's going to be on our, our bulletin and stuff like that and we never talk about again, okay? Um, it's something that everything we do needs to be evaluated and then reevaluated and then reevaluated by God's word to say, are we doing what we're supposed to be doing. Is there a way to make it better? Is, it a, is there a, something that, you know, we're doing it, but why are we doing it? And it really doesn't fit what God has called us to do. And so, so this is going to be kind of more of a guide for us as we move ahead. Um, so I want to start in prayer and then, then share with you um, about, you know, what our purpose is. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for the way uh, that you have been leading leadership in our church. Uh, Father, there have been concerns and valid, valid, valid concerns. Um, and, and God, that these things are the beginning of addressing some of those. Uh, God, I, I realize that, um, you know, this is not, you know, you know, this is what man makes to help us. 
follow you. And so, God, we just, we submit it to you. Um, And so, God, uh, lead us today as we look at your word, as we see how it directs what our purpose is to be. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. So, um, I want to begin by just, um, today we're going to be focusing on growing upward, but I'll just let you know, it's like the last third of the message. The first third is kind of bringing us to that place. Um, you know, then, then we'll look at the growing together, and then the next week, guess what? Growing out. So, uh, so, um, so, so, you know, first of all, you know, you, 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 you have a, a vision statement or something like that. It always begins with something like that, but Kings Creek Baptist Church exists to glorify God. That's the starting place. Why are we here? Why are we going through, you know, what we're doing? Why do we have programs? Why are we? It's all about pointing up to God. It's all about to God be the glory. Um, uh, Just a, a, a passage In Ephesians chapter 3, it says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly that that all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so because of who he is, that it's through the church that we are glorifying God, that we are the the mouthpiece to say, look how awesome our God is. And so whatever we do, it needs to follow under saying, is it glorify God? Is it glorify God? And, and, And so it goes on to say, by equipping and encouraging believers too. And then we're going to talk about that grow up, grow up, grow together, grow out. Um, and, and so here, here's the thing. I can't make you grow. This church can set up wonderful things to help you grow. But I can't make you grow. But here's the responsibility of the church and the enablement from God. We can't make you grow, but we can equip you to. You know the difference? You know, you, you went to school and you learned a bunch of stuff about math, but then here you go and you're like, I don't know what to do with this now. You just psh, you know, went away. You were equipped, but you didn't do anything with it. And so, so we're going to be talking about a lot of things and like, does this equip us? Or does this encourage us? And, and so first of all, you know, um, equipping. It says, it says in, in Hebrews 13, Now may God, the God of peace, and it goes on, but it continues, May the God of peace equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that, that w- which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That gets both the equipping and the glory in, in there. So, so first of all, it's God who's going to be enabling us, but then uh, later on in Scripture, um, it, it talks talks about how God gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and shepherds and teachers to do what? To equip the saints, okay? So God is the one who ultimately is the equipper, but he uses the leadership of the church, the ministries of the church for this purpose, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. And and believe it or not, it still goes on after that. There wasn't a period. And it's just like, so it's, it's God who does it through the ministries of the church to equip believers to be what we are to be, the fullness of Christ. And so, again, this is why we're, we, well, this is going to be something that, that we'll continually ask. Is this equipping? Is this a, encouraging? The word equip means to prepare, to make one fit for service. The other word is encouraging. Encouraging. The word encouraging is used 29 times in the New Testament. It's also translated exhort. It's also translated comfort. Um, and so, you know, Paul, and again, there's tons of, of examples of this, but just one verse. We sent Timothy um, to our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ to establish and exhort you or encourage you in your faith. And so Paul's like, hey, I, you know, I just left Thessalonia. I'm going to send Timothy back there because they need to be equipped, but they also need to be encouraged, okay? Because it's one thing to be all ready and all that, but that, that, that coming alongside. See, the word encouragement uh, literally means 
coming alongside and helping you. Uh, it's the same word in the noun form um, that, that Jesus used for the Holy Spirit to the one who comes alongside and enables us. And so Kings Creek Baptist Church exists to glorify God by equipping and encouraging believers to. Now, what are we to be doing? What is it that the church is to be doing? And so there's a passage in Acts chapter 2. Well, for, first of all, here, here, here it's all together. But there's a passage in, 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 in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is right when the church began. And at the very end of chapter 2, there's this summaration of here's what the church was about. So this is what the church was about before they had any problems. <laughs> This is, this, is, you know, this is what the church was about before they, there were any issues, before there was any power plays, before there were anything going on, before they had to choose the color of carpet. I mean, all of this was before all of that. And so in Acts chapter 2, it begins with these words of saying, okay, well, how did it start before it got messed up? Because it doesn't take long for things to get messed up. Acts chapter 2 starts with these words, um, verse 42 and following. And they... This young church, the believers, devoted themselves to. I, I like the, the New American Standard um, that, that says they were continually devoting them, themselves to. They were continually devoting themselves to. It's, it's a better use of the word to be steadfastly attentive to. That it's not something you do on a whim. It's not something you do when you feel like it. It's something you're committed to do. And so this church, uh, uh, when, it, when the church first started, when the believers were together, this is what they were committed. Not, okay, be careful, not Peter and not James and John and all that. They had their role, but this is believers. So what were they about doing? Well, it says so. They continually devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and of prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Now, there's more. There's more. You know, we're, we're going to break it down here just a little bit. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing uh, the, the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking breads in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now, boom, end of that, end of that summary statement. And so it's just like, okay, when the church started... Here's what they were committed to do. Now, there's a long list there, and we made it into a nice three things to, 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 to do this stuff. So, so, um, so let's break it down that way. You'll see what, what the first church did. Grow upward. Grow upward. You, you saw there, and I'm pulling phrases from that passage we just read. The apostles' teaching. Some of Jesus' last words to his apostles were, you know, go into all the world and, and declare, make disciples. And, and he says baptizing. There's an aspect of outreach here. But then he says, teaching them everything that I've commanded you. There's that teaching element. And so the apostles' teaching was sharing the story of Christ, going back into the Old Testament, because the New Testament wasn't made yet, and going back and pointing about Christ and all. And so there's this growing upward. There's this apostles' teaching. And to the prayers, they were committed themselves to prayers and Praising God. Uh, it says all of these phrases came from that Acts 2 passage. And so in growing upward, and we're going to break it down a little bit more, um, uh, growing upward, here's some of those phrases used. But then we, we grow together. We grow together. Here's some phrase that came, comes out of Acts chapter 2. Uh, they fellowship. 
Uh, fellowship is a word, that, again, they have things in common. And the biggest thing they had in common is they knew Christ and they grew in closeness to one another. The breaking of bread, two times it mentions about, and they broke bread together, simply means they sat down and, and ate together and spent time together uh, and, and in their homes and things like that. And then um, they had all things in common. You know, again, that, that's the definition of fellowship. But again, bringing these things up and then it says needs were met because they they were around each other they knew each other they knew each other's needs needs were being met all of these things worked together as the first church grew together now lastly grow outward grow outward here's some phrases and when you first read it you may not catch it but here's one of the phrases, you know, meets were met, so that was part of the together part, but then also they, they, they did things out. Attended temple together. Now see, when you read that, when I first read it, I thought, oh, they went to church. That's not what they did at the temple. What did the apostles do all through the book of Acts in the temple? They shared Jesus. That, that's where people were coming with a religious uh, emptiness and they went to them and they shared Christ. Now, there's other passages in the book of Acts that says while the church was scattered, they went and shared with everybody. But the first initial place that they went to were people coming together and they shared in the temple. They got in trouble with it too. Um, you know, it's so funny. One, one of the stories in Acts is, is you know, they're, they're out there and they're witnessing and all that. They get thrown in jail and the angel lets them out. And where do they go? They go right back into the temple and they keep sharing about Jesus. So to grow outward, they met, meet needs, they attended a, a, a temple together. And it says they had favor with all the people, that, that they were winsome, that they, they were connecting with people, and, and again, uh, reaching outward. Now here's something I want, want you to, to look at, what the first church did. And again, I'm going to use our wording. Um, growing, they, they grew upward, they grew together, they, they, they grew outward. That's what the church committed to do. But in that same passage in Acts 2, it shares what God did. And see, here's the thing. It's not either or. Believers in Christ need to commit to what we are supposed to do. But we are not enough. It is not, oh, we'll just try harder and stuff like that. What God did. Look at some of the phrases. It says what God did. It says there was a sense of awe. A sense of awe as believers came together, as believers were taught by the disciples, as believers were, were in homes together. There was a sense of awe of the presence of God. That's not man generated. That's God coming in the room and being recognized. A sense of awe. It says wonders and signs were done. Again, you know, God does the wonders and signs and stuff like that. We pray for people and all that, but it's up to God who heals. Wonders and signs were done. And the last thing that it mentions, and he, God, added to their number those who were being saved. Now listen, listen, I believe if the church does its part, you know, God, God is faithful. You know, he does his part. And, and so as we are doing our part about growing uh, upward in our relationship with him, as we are growing together in our relationship with one another, as we grow outward in our relationship with those who are not believers, God's going to do. God's going to bring all. God's going to bring wonders and signs. God is going to add to the numbers those being saved. Now, there's so much in all of this. Uh, I want to just focus on this one, and, and that is, you know, here's the whole thing. King's Creek Baptist Church exists to glorify God by equipping and encouraging believers to grow upward, to grow together, and to grow outward. Now, let's look at the grow upward. We will grow upward to know him better. That's what our relationship is. Jesus defined what eternal life was. When you think, oh, this is eternal life, you think, okay, that happens when I die. No, that happens once you become a believer. 
And Jesus said this, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. That it's not about, I know about God, or I know about Jesus, but I genuinely know him. And then Paul, and I'm not, I don't have you know, all these passages up here, but Paul over and over again just says, I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know more. He's like the person who knew, knew God the most in his day, and he's still saying it's not enough. Will we ever know God fully? And so we, the first part of this is growing upward to know God better. How do we know him better? Through. And it, these come from these statements in Acts. Worship that exalts God. Worship that exalts God. Now there's a lot of definitions of worship. There's a lot of... Worship that's out there, that isn't really worship and all that. Here, here's what Jesus said. He, he said uh, to the woman who was at the well, and she's like, well, we do worship here, and you do worship there. And, and he says, listen, listen, there's, an hour is coming, and now it's here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. That it doesn't matter whether you are, you, are uh, you know, in, 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 in this church or that church and all that. Listen, is, is God there? Is God's word pre preached there and all that? And, and the worship, spirit. Now, there, there's some say that should be a capital S or not, but, but I, I just think it, it's from the inside. It's not just mouths moving. It's from the heart. It's, it's enthused worship. Worshiping the Father in spirit and then in truth. You know, and, and here's the thing. I hate to say, there seems to be a struggle <laughs> where you have enthusiastic worship and everybody's woo -hoo 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 and all that, but it may not be very truth-led. And then you have very, you know, and it, the, the tendency can be very dry. <laughs> and, and it's not, it kind of misses that God created emotions <laughs> that we should be able to worship him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength to love him. And so worship of God begins again with the worshiper and, and that we worship God in spirit and in truth. But also, it says in Romans chapter 12, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now listen, listen. Worship is more than this. Okay, that's praise. That's part of worship. Worship is all of life. Worship is the response of being with God and then serving God. Worship is all the things that we do um, with our bodies. And so we'll grow up or to know him better through worship that exalts God. Listen, you exalt God when you go to, go to a believer's house and help them help, help build a deck so that they don't fall through their old deck. That's an act of worship. You know, whether in here or out there in the world, we are to worship and exalt God. Worship is not about you. Worship isn't about me. When we sing, sing to him. We're not singing for one another. And I hear, I hear people, and they'll, sometimes they say it jokingly and stuff like that. You don't want to hear me sing. And you know, it's like, don't worry, I'm far enough away. Um, but, uh, you know, I can't hold it to Listen, listen. Did, did, do you hear anything in the Bible that says you've got to have the tune right? Sometimes we are looking around when we worship. Whether actually physically or just kind of, you're aware of the people around you. And oh, I don't want to sing too loud because what if they, uh, uh, listen, we are singing to him and he's the only one that matters in the room. So let me encourage you as we worship, as we praise him together, remember, who you're singing to. Now, 
Another part of growing upward is teaching that magnifies Christ. Teaching that magnifies Christ. When Paul basically just said it, he says, what do you preach? We preach Christ. <laughs> we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and a folly to Gentiles. What are you saying? Listen, we're going to preach Jesus. What are you going to preach about the next week? We're going to preach about Jesus. Even if people don't like it, <laughs> even if people think, yeah, you know, well, that's a stumbling block. He died on the cross. It means I'm a sinner. I don't want to hear about you. Know. No, we'll preach him. We'll keep preaching him. Or, oh, that's foolishness. That's what the Gentiles said. As people who don't understand, we'll say, we're still going to preach Christ. Now he says also, him, Christ, we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. We keep teaching about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. And guess what the response will be? We'll be equipping and encouraging people to become mature in Christ. Mature in Christ. Now, you might be going, well, if we're only preaching Jesus, that means you're just going to be in the New Testament. Really? Tell that to Jesus. Jesus was on the road right after his resurrection. He meets two men. Or actually, you know, he, 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 not by accident, Jesus, I'm here. Um, but they don't know it's him. And they start talking about, you know, the bad things that are happening. He's like, what things? They're like, where have you been? And they talk about how Jesus, who they thought might have been the Christ, and how he died, and now they don't know what's happened to him because his tomb's empty, and oh, oh yeah. And he's just like, oh, didn't you know? It's just, it's written. It's, it's right here. Now, here at that time was just the Old Testament. And he says, right there. And so it says this in, in, in um, Luke 24. And beginning with Moses... He interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, basically, it says, in beginning in Moses, and that's Genesis through Deuteronomy, and he said, let me show you where I am. In Genesis chapter 1. Now, you didn't have chapters back then. You know, let us make man in our image. Guess who the us is, you know? It's me, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm right there. Let's go to chapter 3. Let me, let me share about that. Where, where, where after they fell, that, that the promise was made that to the serpent that, that yeah, you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head, the seed of the woman. I'm him. I'm the seed of the woman. You know, and, and he went through, starting in Moses, through the whole scriptures, all the prophets, all the Psalms, all the stories of David, all the stories of Abraham, went through all of this stuff. And guess who kept showing up on just about every page? Jesus. And so when we preach, when we teach, it's going to end up with Jesus. It's going to end up with Jesus. Now, speaking of teaching, we have had a struggle since COVID of having Sunday school classes. We've, we've have, you know, a couple classes right now that, uh, um, you know, uh, Charles leads and, and, and uh, Dave and Joe lead. And, and we have not been able, I've come to the church many, many, many times, you know, saying, hey, we need people in nursery, we need people in the children and all that. Well, I don't know if you noticed, you know, sometimes you have the pre-service commercials that are up here, you know, some of that. There's something you didn't notice. There was a change in one of the slides. Sunday school. I would just say 945. Classes for all ages. Starting June 2nd. Not next week, but the week after. Starting June 2nd. Now, here, here's how we're doing it. Here's how we're, we're going to do it. We're going we're gonna to start small. And as the need grows, as the classrooms grow, then we'll 
split the class and go more. But let's start with at least the adult classes there, and guess what? If it gets too big, then we'll make more adult classes and stuff like that. So we're all still going to start. So those are that. That's the easy part. Uh, the hard part was, well, who's going to teach the children? Who's going to teach the youth? Who's going to teach the? Okay, well, we we Mike, Mike, thank you. You and Caroline are going to be in the nursery during Sunday school time to to help those who are the 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 preschool or age down and stuff like that. And then Becky and Doug, thank you very much. They stepped up and said, and we're going to teach those children and up. Now, when we get to a point of going, hey, there's enough youth, then we'll split that to a youth class, or maybe we might have to split it later on. As it grows, we will do it. But starting this, this two weeks from now, there's Sunday school for every, every class, every age group. Now, yeah, we may start with, there's, there's a big disparity of ages between, and so what? We can learn from one another of, of, of young to old, old to young, and so that begins. And so this is one of the things that we're like, okay, this is something we said we really need. We want more and more teaching of God's Word to share Christ, and so therefore, Sunday school starts. And so, no excuses, 745. Sunday school, 945. I don't know what I'm doing at 745. I'm still working on things. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. If you want to come at 745, just let me know. I'll unlock it and I'll go back home. Um, but uh, yeah, 945. That's why it's on there, not, not, not on my sheet. Um, and so we will grow upward to know him better through worship that exalts God, through teaching that magnifies, that magnifies um, Christ, and through prayer. That is spirit-enabled. Listen, we cannot, okay, we can come up with cute little things and stuff like that, okay? But unless God's in it, what does the verse say? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. We need to ask and keep asking. And, and asking is not just, God, help us, help us, help us, help us, but God, direct us, direct us, direct us. I mean, if we're going off, please let us know. God, if there's something that needs to pop up that says, hey, this is the next thing. Now, now again, there's a lot of other things that we, we are going to work on. I, you've probably noticed there's a slight change in our order of worship where we kind of do, you know, some of the meet and greets and prayer requests, all that, before we really begin in earnest the worship. Those are some of the things that this has begun uh, us doing. And so we're constantly going to be evaluating. Now, we can't change everything at once, but here's a couple things just in this area of, of this. So, so, so prayer. Um, it, it says in Timothy, um, Paul says, first of all, I, I, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people. Prayers of all types are for all people, you know. And so, you know, God, for, for and, and, and the next verse even says, and even for people in government, you know. So, so it just says we're to be praying for all people in, in their situations and in their needs. But, but then, then again, we're to continually be praying. It says continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. It says also pray with Without ceasing. This is to be the, the, the heartbeat of the church because we can't do it without him. And sometimes you ever you ever go, I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know what to ask for. Well, do I have a verse for you? <laughs> it says, likewise, the, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Now here's Paul writing. Um, this is in uh, Romans chapter 8. Here's Paul writing. You know what? There's sometimes I don't know what to pray. But we have God's Spirit in us. And, and, and it says, and the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And so, you know, just being in the act of prayer, the Holy Spirit will empower that prayer, will direct that prayer. It goes on to say, and he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so listen, listen, sometimes you're going to pray and you're going to pray wrong. God will lovingly correct you and the Spirit knows what 
to pray. And so, again, we need prayer that isn't about me or even about you, you know, maybe specific needs and all that, but it's primarily about him and his will to be done. If you've ever looked at the Lord's Prayer, there's very little bit about you asking for things for yourself. It's about, hey, Father, your name be hallowed. <laughs> you be honored. You be glorified. Your will to be done. You know, it's about him. It's about him. And it's like, oh, yeah, and, you know, I, I need my daily needs, and I don't need to be tempted. You know, I mean, that's a real short saying, but it's just like, it's more about him. God, we want your will to be done. God, we want, because of a sickness, we want people to know you through this, that people will grow, Christians will grow, that people who are, are lost will see the difference that you make in the lives of believers. And so there's a greater emphasis on prayer. And again, we're just beginning that. Um, and, and again, just again, I, and I say, you know, if I mention, hey, we got classes, guess what? We're gonna, that's just starting. There's more things we need to do about growing in magnifying, you know, the, uh, biblical teaching uh, of Christ. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to pray. We need to pray for one another. Yeah, we do really well with that praying for someone's sick and someone, someone just died and pray for the family. We do really well with that, but we need to expand on that, that we don't just pray for people's health, but their spiritual health as well. We need to pray for the spiritual health of our church. We need to pray for God's direction and enablement. This is why we started just a couple weeks ago um, praying before anything began on Sunday mornings. Um, um, it, it, it's not as early as 7.45, so it's not so bad. It's at 9.15. And listen, if you come to Sunday school at 9.45, it's just a perfect thing to go right from prayer right into class. So, um, so again, um, this is why we start the worship service in prayer. Because, again, we can't do it without him. And so, <laughs> as a mouthful... <laughs> We will grow upward to know him better. To worship that exalts God. Teaching that magnifies Christ. Prayer that is spiritually, that is spirit enabled. Now, <laughs> that's just one third of it. Next week we're going to talk about growing together. What does that look like? And what are some things that we are planning as a church to help in that? Um, Let's, let's go to our Savior in prayer. Jesus, we want you to be glorified. And you are not glorified when the church just does its own thing. And when the why we do things, we, we answer with, well, that's the way we've always done it. God, we want to do our part. We want to steadfastly devote ourselves to uh, these things that your word has, has proclaimed so that we can grow upward in our relationship with you to know you. And we can grow together in, in, in our, our closeness as we grow together in Christ, we grow together to one another to grow outward. That we show this world and share you, Christ, with this world. Again, we cannot do this without you. Lead us. Encourage us to be a part and to watch what you do. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Before Doug um, leads us in a closing song, uh, again, I, I, I always hang out here at the front. If you need to talk with me about your relationship with Christ, if you remember, I shared this. Um, Jesus defined eternal life, that they may know you, not know about you, not know the facts, not just, just you know, yeah, yeah, I heard about Jesus when I was in VBS 20 years ago. But do you know Christ? I would love to share with you if you have any doubt there. Um, and again, I'll be hanging out here following the service. Um, but would you pray with me for our church as we move ahead?
Doug, if you'd close us. Oh, I understand. Of course, 10,000.